Trigonelline, which is otherwise known as 1-methylnicotinic acid, increases NAD levels in mice. And if you missed that video, it'll be in the right corner. But what about in people? In part two of the series for foods that could increase NAD, we'll take a look at fenugreek seeds. And that's because they contain trigonelline. In this study, 0.262% trigonelline was in fenugreek seeds. In other words, 2.6 milligrams of trigonelline per gram of fenugreek seeds. And note that that's seven times more than chickpeas, which was in part one of this video. But in two other studies, they've been shown to have a lot more trigonelline than in this first study. In the first, 91.2 milligrams of trigonelline per gram fenugreek seeds, and in the second, 98.4. So when considering the lowest dose, 2.6 milligrams of trigonelline per gram fenugreek seeds, I then added them to the diet to see if I could increase NAD levels. So for 11 days before testing, I added an average of 21 grams of fenugreek seeds into the diet. And first I tried them raw and almost broke my teeth. So then I ground them and added them to a cooked mix that I eat every day. And when multiplying 21 grams per day by the trigonelline content, the lowest trigonelline content in fenugreek seeds, that yields 55 grams of trigonelline per day. But other stuff from the diet also contributed, albeit lesser amounts, including banana, barley, chickpeas, oats, and oranges, which added an additional 13 milligrams of trigonelline per day to yield a total of 68 milligrams per day. But nonetheless, 55 milligrams coming from fenugreek seeds is almost all of the 68 milligrams of trigonelline. So then, did 68 milligrams of trigonelline per day impact NAD levels? So to address that on, for a February 2nd test, I sent blood to Ginfinity for NAD analysis. And if you want to measure your own NAD levels, there's a discount link in the video's description. So on that day, NAD was 26.6 micromolar. And this is only a minor NAD increase, if at all. It could be test-to-test -test variation. And we can see why that's true by taking a look at all of my NAD results over the past 13 months, which is shown here. So starting with the most recent test, 68 milligrams of trigonelline, 26.6 micromolar. In comparison with the last test, mostly driven by chickpeas, 27 milligrams of trigonelline. So why didn't I get a bigger increase for NAD with a big, uh, a more than double or more than doubling for trigonelline intake? Well, as I was making this video earlier in the week, I came across a fourth study where trigon trigonelline's content in fenugreek seeds was 1,300 parts per, parts per million. In other words, only 1.3 milligrams per gram. Uh, for, so 1.3 milligrams of trigonelline per gram of fenugreek seeds, which could knock the trigonelline content down from 68 to about 40 milligrams per day. Now that may be what happened here, as I'd expect going from 27 to 40 milligrams of trigonelline, relatively small increase, and then a relatively small increase for NAD, 25.6 to 26.6. That could be what happened, or again, it could be normal test-to-test -test variation. Now, Without any D precursors, note that my highest value has been 25.6 micromolar. That was both for the chickpea test for the last month and also for the, my first ever test. Now, without any D, any D precursors, it's never been, NAD has never been higher than 26 micromolar. This is again why I say this is at best a minor NAD increase as it's never been higher than 25.6. And here I've got 26.6. Now note that for one of those tests though, it was 18.5 micromolar, which raises the possibility that increasing dietary trigonelline intake may have helped push my NAD levels, blood intracellular NAD levels, towards the higher end of my range, which is again, 25.6 micromolar without NAD precursors. So at least now without NAD precursors, the higher end of my range may be 26.6 micromolar, helping keeping me away from 18.5 micromolar. And just to illustrate, with NAD precursors, NAD has always been greater than 26 micromolar, as we can see on all of those tests there. With the exception of one test, 300 milligrams of NMN per day didn't make a dent, 25.3 micromolar. So when considering that fenugreek seeds didn't impact NAD, is the trigonelline NAD experiment over? And for now, I wouldn't say it's over. I've temporarily paused it. I've added other things to the diet that have trigonelline, like alfalfa sprouts, sprouts and I'm thinking about making my own sprouts because they're pretty expensive, $5 for 100 grams. And I've been, when I say added them to the diet, not five or 10 grams, but close to 100 grams per day. So it can get expensive. So I may have to grow my own sprouts. If I grow my own sprouts, there'll be a part three to this series for foods that could potentially increase NAD with a focus on alfalfa sprouts. 
All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to buy high aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that you may be interested in, including discount links for epigenetic testing, including telomere length, NAD quantification, oral microbiome composition, at-home metabolomics, at-home blood testing with SciFox Health, which includes ApoB, green tea, chronometer, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch. So if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, as I've got on here, that link and all of the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.